You're watching Saluran Brita RTM with me, Rene Fong. Good evening. The issuing of the 500 million ringgit Sukuk Prihatin Islamic bonds today is in response to the people's desire to help the government rebuild the economy in the post-COVID-19 pandemic era. Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin said the government decided to implement a bottom-up approach in the issuance of Sukuk Prihatin to open opportunities for the public and the corporate sector to subscribe. Elaborating further on the matter, Tan Sri Mohidin said the subscription from Sukuk Prihatin would be channeled into the COVID-19 consolidated fund and programs to be funded by Sukuk were the benefit for those affected by the pandemic. Oleh kerana dana Sukuk Prihatin ini tertumpu kepada golongan yang benar-benar memerlukan, kerajaan berjanji akan memastikan seboleh mungkin tidak ada yang ketinggalan dalam usaha pemulihan ekonomi susulan wabak COVID-19 ini. No one will be left behind. He also said the Sukuk Prihatin Initiative met the three focus of the shared prosperity vision and is part of an approach that would benefit the most target group that is worst affected by COVID-19. The three focus of the shared prosperity vision are to restructure economy by ensuring development for all, addressing inequality by bridging the income gap and building the country towards a united, prosperous and dignified nation. Tan Sri Mohidin also expressed optimism today in the economy's ability to recover from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, saying Malaysia is on track to bounce back. He said economic indicators showed that many sectors had recorded quick recoveries since reopening, while exports and industrial production have also been on the rise. The Premier said that wholesale and retail trade sales notched a 21.8% growth in June with the sale of motor vehicles rising by 78.9%. With these early signs of recovery, Tan Sri Mohidin noted that the country's economy is expected to gradually recover in the second half of 2020 and hopefully record a strong GDP recovery of between 5.5% and 8% in 2021. Walaupun masih banyak usaha yang perlu kita sama-sama lakukan, untuk membina semula ekonomi negara, saya yakin dengan tekad yang kuat dan semangat yang teguh, kita mampu untuk menangani masalah ekonomi berikutan penularan wabak COVID-19 ini. Malaysia's first digital sukuk, the 500 million ringgit sukuk Prihatin that was launched today, may be subscribed to with a minimum investment of 500 ringgit with no maximum limit. According to Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zaful Tengku Abdul Aziz, it may be fully subscribed digitally through Jom Pay and Do It Now. Ini merupakan satu kadar yang kompetitif memandangkan ianya ditetapkan selama dua tahun. Keuntungan akan dikreditkan ke dalam akaun pelabur setiap suku tahun. The finance minister said this at the launch of the Sukuk Prihatin in Putrajaya witnessed by the Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bilah Shah who also consented to become the Sukuk's first investor. A statement from the finance ministry said the Sukuk may be subscribed to from today until 17th September with profits to be paid on a quarterly basis and exempted from tax. It said the Sukuk for which Maybank is the main distribution bank is a Sharia compliant instrument based on the the principle of Tawaruk via the commodity Murabaha arrangement and is open to Malaysian citizens aged 18 years and above. The finance minister added that the Sukuk Prihatin is one of the initiatives under the National Economic Recovery Plan Panjana launched by the Prime Minister on 5th June. Sports and co-curricular activities to be held outside of classrooms will be permitted starting 1st September. Senior Minister Security Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the decision, however, must take into consideration the physical and psychological well-being of students. In addition, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the implementation must comply with guidelines issued by the National Security Council and other related ministries. Garis panduan ini merangkumi pelaksanaan aktiviti sukan dan co-kurikulum sekolah secara bersemuka termasuk 
latihan amali di luar bilik darjah bagi mata pelajaran pendidikan jasmani dan pendidikan kesihatan serta sains sukan dan keadaan dalam keadaan yang terkawal. Antara garis panduan yang perlu dipatuhi termasuk mendapatkan kebenaran bertulis ibu bapa murid yang terlibat. Jadi ibu bapa mesti beri kebenaran sebelum mereka terlibat dalam aktiviti. Menggunakan bilik mandi persalinan dihadkan mengikut kapasiti. Ini antara-antara yang kita luluskan. Memastikan penjarakan fizikal 1 hingga 3 meter bagi, bagi aktiviti statistik dan 3 hingga 5 meter bagi aktiviti dinamik di, aktiviti dinamik. Peralatan perlu dibersihkan dan disanitasi. He said the special meeting also reviewed and approved the guidelines for the teaching and learning of technical and vocational education practical activities, which would also begin on 1st September. The senior minister added that the guidelines are applicable to more than 89 vocational colleges and selected Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan and Sekolah Menengah Teknik. Among the guidelines that must be adhered to are deciding the number of students based on the capacity of space and areas used for the activities, cleaning and disinfecting practical equipment and not allowing symptomatic students to join practical activities. After six consecutive days of recording two-digit COVID-19 positive cases, the number of new daily cases has decreased to a single digit with seven cases reported today. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said four of the new cases are imported, where two of them are Malaysians and the others are foreigners, while the remaining are local transmissions registered in Kedah. Empat kes adalah kes import yang telah mendapat jangkitan di luar negara iaitu melibatkan dua kes warga negara Malaysia dan dua bukan warga negara. Empat kes import tersebut adalah dari negara iaitu Bangladesh, dua bukan warga negara dan seorang warga negara. Satu lagi ialah satu kes lagi daripada yang pulang pada United Kingdom. Ketiga-tiga kes penularan di dalam negara melibatkan warga negara Malaysia di Kedah iaitu dua kes daripada kluster Salah dan satu kes daripada kluster Tawar. 26 cases have recovered and were discharged, making the total active cases as of today 8,902. Currently, eight cases are under intensive care unit ICU treatment with two needing respiratory aid. No new deaths were recorded today. A heavier punishment should be imposed against those who deliberately fly the Jalur Gemilang upside down and insult the National Code of Arms. Communications and Multimedia Deputy Minister Datuk Zahidi Zainul Abidin, who cited Thailand, said the country imposes severe punishments on those who insult the country, including the king, which would be a lesson to deter others from doing the same mistake. Commenting further on the matter, Datuk Zahidi said those who fly the Jalur Gemilang upside down and insult the National Coat of Arms should be arrested. And if possible, stern action taken against them because in other countries, it is rare for people to insult the National Flag and the Coat of Arms as well as the King. He also said that imposing heavy punishment on such offenders would be a lesson to others. The Communications and Multimedia Deputy Minister added that the Ministry will continue to step up efforts to make the people understand why they have to respect the national flag and the coat of arms, which are the symbols of the country. The Johor police managed to cripple a drug trafficking and distribution syndicate in the state with the recent arrest of 23 of its members through several operations. The syndicate known as Gang Halim was crippled following a total of 22 raids by the Johor Narcotics Criminal Investigation Department NCID in the Johor Bahru, Iskandar Putri, Pontian and Kota Tinggi districts. Johor Police Chief Dato Ayub Khan Maidin Pichai said the raids were carried out through a special operation against the syndicate between 11 August and yesterday. He said the suspects arrested consisted of 17 local men, including the syndicate's mastermind known as Halim, four local women as well as an Indonesian and Vietnamese woman aged between 31 and 50. 
During the raid, police also managed to seize various drugs, including 14.03 kilograms of marijuana, 6.84 kilogram of heroin, 1.58 kilogram of shabu, 44.31 grams of ketamine, and 400 yaba pills worth 170,052 ringgit. He said further investigations into the syndicate revealed links to drug trafficking syndicates in Indonesia and the supplies were obtained from Kuala Lumpur, with Johor being a transit for distribution throughout the state's western coast. Dato Ayub Khan also said drug urine screening on the suspects found that 19 of them were positive for methamphetamine and ketamine abuse. The Johor police chief added that the suspects have been remanded for 14 days starting yesterday and the case will be investigated under Section 39B, Section 12, Subsection 2 and Section 15, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952 and Section 6, Subsection 1, Subsection C of the Immigration Act 1959-63. A company owner pleaded not guilty at the Seremban Sessions Court in Negeri Sembilan today to 22 counts of money laundering involving cigarette smuggling. Chua Bun Leng, 54, made the plea after the charges were read out in Mandarin to him before Judge Diana Mat Razali. On the 1st to the 18th count, Chua was alleged to have used his current accounts at Maybank, CIMB and Hongleong Bank and his company account at Maybank as a platform to commit money laundering. For the 19th to the 22nd charge, he was alleged to have committed money laundering by transferring 550,000 ringgit from his account at Maybank to an account at CIMB. All the offences were allegedly committed at the Seremban 2 branch offices of the banks concerned between 1st October 2014 and 24 May 2019. He was charged under Section 4, Subsection 1, Subsection B of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001, which provides an imprisonment for up to 15 years and fine of five times the amount of proceeds from unlawful activities or five million ringgit, whichever is higher if found guilty. The court allowed Chua bail of 80,000 ringgit in one surety for all charges and set 15 September for mention. The prosecution was conducted by Deputy Public Prosecutor Harris Ong, Muhammad Jeffrey Ong, while Chua was represented by lawyer Arif Amir. Coming up, government plans to build 7,374 homes for military personnel. Malaysian tourism industry players are urged to boost tourist confidence through good hygiene practices to restore public confidence in travelling once again. Tourism Malaysia Director General Datuk Musa Yusof said tourism industry players must always adhere to the SOPs and maintain social distancing among travellers. So, kita telah mendapat kelulusan 13 SOPs. Eh? Hotel, travel agency, macam-macam. Uh, katalah hotel nak buat event yang ber berbentuk bisnes tourism. Hmm. Ada SOP dia. Banyak apa tu. So, ada 13 yang telah dulu. Team, uh, team park sebagainya. Ada yang dry park, ada yang water park. So, all these semua dah ada SOP. 13 yang kerajaan telah lalu. Mereka hendaklah mengikuti sepenuh-penuhnya SOP ini. Uh, itu yang kita titik beratkan. Datuk Musa also highlighted the fact that the reopening of the Malaysia-Singapore border is only for business visits and is done in stages. Cross-border travel between Malaysia and Singapore starting yesterday was made after both countries reached an agreement through two schemes, namely the Reciprocal Green Lane RGL and the Periodic Commuting Arrangement PCA. The government plans to build 7,374 housing units under the Malaysian Armed Forces ATM, One Member, One House Program, or Satu Anggota, Satu Rumah Sasar Program in the near future. The proposal by the Ministry of Defence was given the green light in a cabinet meeting on 7th August. 
According to Defence Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, the objective of the programme is to ensure that every military member, veteran and ministry civilian personnel owns a house. He also said that as many as 6,400 affordable Sasar housing units at the Gunting Klang camp will be up for sale at a price of 150,000 to 250,000 ringgit, while 974 Sasar premium units at the Wardi Burn camp will be up for sale at a price of 350,000 to 400,000 ringgit. Jadi kita harapkan dengan harga jualan murah sasar iaitu separuh harga akan dapat membantu warga Kementerian Pertahanan meliputi anggota tentera, golongan veteran dan awam untuk membeli dan memiliki rumah sendiri. Kita juga mencadangkan supaya 10% daripada jumlah rumah tersebut dijual kepada veteran juga. Dan kita akan, saya dah beritahu kepada KSU, mungkin kita uh, boleh bantu dari segi pinjaman. Ya, pinjaman. Sebab kalau veteran, nombor dia mungkin dah 450 dan nak beli rumah dari segi loan mungkin terlalu membebankan. The first Sasar project, the Sasar ATM residency in Sungai Besi, involving as many as 3,500 housing units, will begin construction at the end of this year and is expected to be completed by 2023. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the 2020 Tabung Palawan campaign will be targeting 10 million ringgit in donations. The launching ceremony tomorrow, he said, will be officiated by the Prime Minister's wife, Puan Sri Noraini Abdul Rahman. The Defence Minister said the campaign, which will run until the end of December, aims to raise public awareness on the devotion and services of national heroes who gave their lives to defend the country. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said in addition to raising funds to help ATM veterans, it is also hoped that the campaign could help cultivate the spirit of patriotism, especially among younger generations. Mengambil kira wabak COVID-19 yang masih belum berakhir, program kempen Tabung Palawan akan menggunakan pendekatan sedikit berbeza sesuai dengan norma baru yang disarankan oleh kerajaan. Ianya termasuklah penggunaan keadaan promosi melalui media cetak dan elektronik secara menyeluruh News at 10. In our top story, 500 million ringgit prihatin suku for Malaysians to help rebuild economy. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more updates. I'm Renee Fong. Stay tuned to Saluran Berita RTM. Good night.